I'm Claire Duff, I play the Baroque violin and I'm leader of the Irish Baroque Orchestra. To produce a sound on the violin, you need to make one of the strings vibrate. You can do this by plucking a string, pizzicato, or by using the bow, arco. You need to have rosin on the horse's hair in order to create enough friction for the string to vibrate. The energy of the vibrating string is transmitted through the bridge. This is the bridge here and into the body of the violin. The body of the violin acts as a sound box and we have two F holes here which allows the sound to radiate out into the air. play on a Baroque violin, so it is set up in the way a violin would have been set up in the 17th and 18th centuries. I have a modern violin here, or a standard violin, to compare the two, and you can see that the body is basically the same between the two. There are some differences inside the violins to the sound post and bass bar. You can see here that the Baroque violin doesn't have a chin rest. It also doesn't have a shoulder rest. Because chin rests and shoulder rests weren't invented back then, I just use a little bit of leather chamois. The strings on a Brock violin are made from gut, pure sheep's or cow's gut. Uh, the G string, the lowest string, is wound in metal. On a modern violin, you have steel strings or synthetic strings. You can see that the fingerboard is much longer in the modern violin, so it's shorter in the Baroque violin because composers haven't uh, composed for going up to such high positions. Likewise, the neck is much chunkier. It became slender as composers wanted the violinist to go higher up into higher positions. The angle of the fingerboard is different in the modern violin and Baroque violin. And we might move on to the bow next because there are big differences between the two bows. This is an early 17th century Baroque bow. So this would be useful for French dan dance music, for example, and it would be very good for fast separate notes. Uh, it can be quite brilliant for articulation. This is a normal modern bow and you can see the difference between the two here. Um, in the 18th century, the bows did get a little bit longer, but it's still not as long as a modern bow. So with a Baroque bow, there is less hair, there's less wood, so it's lighter. Uh, you'll probably notice at the tip that um, the tip of the Baroque bow is much more slender and light. So there's a bigger difference. On, in a Baroque bow, there's a big difference between playing at the heel and playing at the tip. And this allows for great articulation and differences and nuances. Uh, in the modern bow, you have more wood going up to the tip, which allows for a more sustained sound. And uh, because it's a more, there's more hair and more wood, it allows for a stronger sound as well. my parents asked my sister and me what instrument we'd like to learn. We had to learn the same instrument and share the same lessons and my younger sister chose the violin. So we both started off on the violin and I just loved it straight away and I've never looked back. I particularly loved playing in string quartets and in the youth orchestras and I loved the way the first violins always got the nice melodies and tunes. I still love the singing quality of uh, the violin and I particularly love the sound of a Brock violin which is a bit more mellow and more gutsy. I um, don't really have a favourite piece of music but I would say that it's probably Bach's slow movements that move me the most. So for example Erbarmedich from St. Matthew's Passion, or the slow movements from Bach sonatas for violin and harpsichord. I will now play a short extract from Telemann's Fantasia No. 1 in B-flat major, the Largo. Uh. 